fantastic. She's the reason we're all here. Please put your hands together for Ashley Austin gonna know how to process that love <laughs> oh my gosh you guys thank you for being here how about the women you've already seen tonight how about that i know multiple women on a show oh what's gonna happen you're gonna get your period sir i don't know if you <laughs> I don't know if you know that. That's what happens when we work together. It's crazy. We just, we just think everyone, we think you'll like it. It's good. I've had a lot of coffee. I have one of those Mr. Coffee machines, but I want a Mrs. Coffee because it's cheaper and works harder. That is a wage gap joke, yeah! <laughs> Come to the stage, Elizabeth Warren! No, I'm just joking. <laughs> it's also just a total throwaway joke. Like, I literally just say it so that the men in the audience can figure out if they're attracted to me or not. Because it's tricky for them, right? Like, I get up here and they're like, oh, mm, 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 mm. Cause like on one hand, I'm kind of cute, but on the other hand, I'm talking, ugh. <laughs> I am just ruining this with my lady words. <laughs> Next, I'll wanna vote, this is crazy. <laughs> she must be stopped. <laughs> It's so crazy. I love you all so much. I'm, I'm, I'm so touched that you're here. It's normally very strange to start a show, right? Because we don't know each other, so it's like a date, right? Like, like I won't shut up, you have to drink. <laughs> and then I just get up here and I'm like, do you like my face? I drew it. <laughs> face like no if it, it's none of their faces like you all look beautiful not your face okay right like men I don't know how you get dressed I think you just go outside right I feel like you guys just go outside and you're like it's me Jeff a man and the world is like, that's a man, give him money. <laughs> but, the, but, but women, we go, we go to this place called Sephora, <laughs> which is just Home Depot for your face. <laughs> right, like we walk in and we're like, give me the power drills. <laughs> The paint, the, the blushes, you know what I mean? And we're just like, like we walk in there, it's just like a manic Bob Ross painting, right? It's just like, here's a happy little eyeball here. And, a happy little, and then I just, I double fist my lipstick. I go, oh, oh, I'm not sad, I'm not sad, I'm not sad. The, con the contour is the worst. The contour, yo, my cheekbone's down here, okay? I said not tonight, and I drew a new one. I drew, I drew a new face, right? Like, and then that, that's like a smoke signal to straight men. It's like, oh, look, I'm not gonna use big words. I challenge your belief system. <laughs> and, then, and then we get you home 
and we wash our face. And we're like, I'm a feminist. <laughs> But we got you. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you got got, you got got, you got got, you got got, you got got. <laughs> I think y'all are just friends, but still, you got got. <laughs> I think the worst is liquid eyeliner. Why do we do liquid eyeliner? Why do we do that? It's so much harder than it needs to be. It's just the stick shift of makeup, right? <laughs> A stick shift, like you know you're driving a car and building a car at the same time. Like you go into second gear, you're like, I'm a union worker, I don't know. Like there's a clutch, I just changed my name to Dan and now, now I'm gonna go tell my wife and kids I got laid off from the factory. You're not going to school, Junior Bubba. I don't know why I said that, honestly. Can you believe that? I'm single. Um, <laughs> That's hurtful. <laughs> Where's the Gen Z people? Make yourself known right now. Right now. Thank God. Okay. Now we can have fun tonight. Now we can. Because, oh my gosh, they are a very sensitive generation. That is. Holy cow, I mean, and I figured it out too. I, I'm, Cause every time they're here, they're like, okay, pronouns, pronouns, pronouns. Like I can't screw up anything, right? And it's just, it's very stressful. And I know why, cause when they were growing up, their trampolines had nets. <laughs> I used to smoke on the trampoline. <laughs> like an adult on a trampoline. I was a kid with a cigarette. Like, I was like... <laughs> yeah, I'm trash. So, um... <laughs> So I'm originally from this really small town in Texas called Garbage, and... Uh, <laughs> There's my brother. He's a garbage person, too. <laughs> But he made good. Um, so, I am, I did my 23 and Me. It just came back a coupon for Cracker Barrel. It was like really good. <laughs> Like I grew up very Southern and very poor, which you know, those are also the ingredients in Mountain Dew. And it's just. <laughs> I saw that at a show and somebody came up to me afterwards and was like, you know, Mountain from Canada. And I was like, okay, but I think Appalachia put it on the map, all right? I... <laughs> right? Like, I grew up way too poor for a peanut allergy, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, poor kids don't have food allergies. That's not... <laughs> That's not a thing. <laughs> like if I had told my mom, I'm allergic to peanut butter, she'd be like, no, you're not. Oh. <laughs> and then I wouldn't have been. Like that would have been the, <laughs> the end of it. Like I have scoliosis, okay? And when I told my mom, I was like, I have scoliosis. She goes, you better straighten up, girl. <laughs> I do, like, that's what I'm bending. I know some freaks, like, are into it. They're like, how far to the left does your spine swing? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on your insurance. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I think it's, I don't like being from the South, right? Like, I have no pride about it. I don't like it. I think it's a very hard place to be from, especially on January 6th. <laughs> Right, because I was watching the attack on the Capitol and I was like, ooh. I hope I haven't kissed any of them. <laughs> right, because like, you never know who Rusty's gonna grow up to be. 
I thought he was gonna make meth. I didn't know he was gonna make his way to the Capitol. I did not see his potential. <laughs> I, was, I, uh, I told that joke in Delaware. <laughs> yeah, they hated me. They, and then I was like, oh, y'all were there. Ah. <laughs> And in my mind, I was like, my dad's half Jewish. To them, that makes me Native American. I gotta go. <laughs> I knew I didn't know that guy in the horns. I didn't know him because he said he had to eat organic. And I was like, oh, no, I don't know him. I don't know him. If they were like, he has to eat Tang and hot Cheetos, I'd be like, I know him, I know him. And I've definitely kissed him. <laughs> it was really hard, it was interesting because I, I grew up with my fam, my, our family, our relatives speak hillbilly. <laughs> Which I don't know, some, you two do. I, not all of you are garbage, but I don't know. If you, oh, oh, there's trash back there, okay. Where's that trash from? Upstate New York. Oh yeah, that's trash, but different accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 no, you're absolute trash. That's, yeah, 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 no, I've been there. I've been there. Syracuse, garbage. Um, disgusting. Um, but different accent, right? Like my people, they speak hillbilly, which is, hillbilly is just a combination of English and incest. <laughs> With like a hint of meth fire, you know what I mean? Like my grandma's hillbilly was out of control. It was so bad. She'd be like, you wanna go to that taco spell? Get yourself that taco and I'm not there. Like, whoa, grandma's a banjo. That's... <laughs> but I was homeschooled, so this is who I'm trying to learn English from. <laughs> So I would just watch episodes of Wheel of Fortune and my grandma would walk by and be like, you can't afford no vow. <laughs> what about a semicolon? <laughs> she, um, this is how bad the hillbilly was for her. Okay, she told me her entire life, her name was Elner. <laughs> her name is Eleanor. <laughs> Do you know how bad your hillbilly is if you can't pronounce your own name? <laughs> and then and then she got Alzheimer's, but her hillbilly was so bad that she had it for 10 years and we didn't know. <laughs> but it ended up being a good thing because she was racist, so. <laughs> and now she can't remember who she hates, so. <laughs> I tell her men in cargo shorts, cause why? You know what I mean? <laughs> why you got all those pockets? <laughs> I grew up, uh, I grew up very Christian. I'm still very Christian. My, my mom is very Christian, but she'll bend the rules. <laughs> like when I was moving, I was moving into a new apartment and I flirted with my landlord to move in a day early. <laughs> and then, <laughs> And, uh, and then I felt bad and I told my mom, I was like, oh, that was sinful. And my mom goes, that's not sinful, that's Southern. <laughs> so I did, I, uh, I, grew up, I grew up very religious. I'm still very religious. I read my Bible every day. Uh, and I, sometimes when I'm reading my Bible, I think like, oh, what if I were a Bible character? <laughs> I could have messed some stuff up. <laughs> like I think about the story of baby Moses, you know the story of baby Moses, right? Like Moses is born and Pharaoh is killing all the baby Jews and Moses' mother is, uh, you know, she puts Moses in a basket and she sends him floating down the Nile and Pharaoh's daughter is bathing in the Nile and she sees the baby in the basket and she takes the baby in the basket and she raises the baby in the basket and the Jewish people continue. It's a beautiful story, right? 
Now we have penicillin and comedy in the Upper West Side. We love Jews, we love Jews. Me? I'm bathing in the Nile and a baby in a basket floats by? Float on by, baby. Um... I'm not touching river, baby. Like that's... Like it's the Nile. There's, there's snakes and alligators. Why haven't they ate that baby? Something ain't right about that baby is what... Not to mention, it's in a basket. That means its mom is one of them DIY people. And I hate those people. The do-it-yourself people. What, the store did it. Why are you doing it? I hate it. I'm so, listen, I'm going to say something, and everybody's going to get mad at me, and I don't care. I love polar bears. How delicious is a plastic straw? It's delicious. It's delicious. It will make you, it'll make you happy. All right? Aerosol spray? Fantastic. Okay? Baskets and everything sustainable, I believe in it. It totally sucks, all right? It sucks, okay? I, I'm wearing organic deodorant, so I'm just not wearing deodorant. Like, and why? Why do they have to be idiots, right? The organic deodorant, it always has that, like, a haiku on the package. <laughs> And then it'll say a portion of this goes to build a well. But it doesn't tell you that it makes you smell like you built the well. <laughs> Listen, and it's all expensive. It's all very... Listen, I would love to wear pants made of almonds, okay? <laughs> this crap is expensive. Y'all, I went to Macy's, it's Macy's. I went to Macy's to get a dress and I put it on and, there, and it was $400, $400 at Macy's. And I was like, what, what? And the lady's like, yeah, it's, um, it's sustainable and like recycled. And I was like, okay, um, where, where's the stuff from China? Where's the... <laughs> With the kid hands, like where'd they... <laughs> gonna judge me but that is that girl's line and she gave it to me and she's a very nice person so so the little hands line you can cancel Molly not me the rest of this material I wrote <laughs> but she tagged that little hand that's why I'm scared of 24 year olds I'm like oh my gosh are they here It's not that people don't like Gen Z. Gen Z is actually like a very loving generation, right? It's that nobody likes people in their 20s. <laughs> right? Because you still get to say things like, no regrets. <laughs> and then when you're older, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I regret everything. I, oh wow. I just want to send an email for my 20s and be like, I am so sorry. <laughs> You're better than millennials, though. Mill Nobody hates millennials anymore because we didn't pan out. <laughs> we have nothing. <laughs> we don't. Mark Zuckerberg has all millennial wealth, and then the rest of us are like, is that a Sacagawea coin? Get it. <laughs> <laughs> don't spend it like a quarter like it's <laughs> so stressful those are so stressful <laughs> and I figured it out I figured out why because millennials the older millennials we were the last generation to grow to have a childhood without the internet right I played with dirt. <laughs> I played with the earth. 
I was like, look at this, it's gravity. <laughs> And then the next generation was writing code. And I was like, but I made my hair sound like a choo-choo train, you know? <laughs> I don't get to own property? <laughs> Like, no, ma'am, and we need you to put your hand down. It's making everyone uncomfortable. <laughs> we played the we played the parachute game in school. You remember the parachute game? Oh my gosh, y'all are kind of making me want to be like, show's over, let's find a parachute. <laughs> like, can you think about that? We took a giant parachute and we stood and we went like this. And children ran under it. And then we trap them, we trap children. <laughs> Without oxygen. And then we were like, go prosper, go, go, go have a life. <laughs> I did eventually go to school after homeschool. Can you imagine if it was just me in my room with a parachute? <laughs> <laughs> It's confusing though, right? Cause, so we got no education with anything that people do. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. I don't download apps. I thought clouds had precipitation, not photos. Like I don't know, I don't know anything, right? Like I went to get a new apartment and I turn in like a dirty flip flop of a credit score. <laughs> and the guy was like, no, you can't live here. And I was like, if you could just bring me a parachute, I could show you what I'm made of. <laughs> I, actually, um, I actually did get to move because I got a COVID apartment. Anyone get a COVID apartment? Yes! Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so if you don't live in New York City, what a COVID apartment is, everyone died. <laughs> and we took their apartments. <laughs> And now the rich people want to come back and they want the apartments back. I'm like, uh, we Dr. Shivago'd you. No, no, no. <laughs> the fact that anyone got that reference, it's like, yeah, that, that makes me very happy. Um, nobody wants to talk about the pandemic anymore. They don't want to talk about it, but I'm telling you right now, I had to wash my panties in a bucket for three months. So I'm gonna bring it up every day of my life in casual conversation, okay? Okay. my own tampons, okay? I was just in my apartment with like a coffee filter and foil, like, uh, I'm either getting a tampon or Wi-Fi, I don't. <laughs> While the rest of the country was like, we're on the same boat. Where'd you get a boat, okay? We were not in the same boat. That was insane, right? Like, I, 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 I got so lonely, I would have answered the door to a Jehovah Witness. <laughs> I'd have been like, you come in, come in, sit down, get out your pamphlets. <laughs> Take off that clip on time. <laughs> that was traumatizing. I learned so much about myself. I didn't need to know any of that. <laughs> I learned if I don't see people, I don't shave. Ever. Y'all, I looked, exactly, I looked down and I was like, that's a different mammal. That's not, 
the woolly mammoths are back. Like that was, and then, and I was like, enough is enough. And so I went in at like 8 p.m. one night. I was like, all right, I'm gonna shave. And I went in and then at like 1 a.m. I was like, you know what? Rome wasn't built in a day. And I went to bed, and in the middle of the night, that hairy leg rubbed up against that non-hairy leg. And I was like, oh, I have a gentleman caller. <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> Um, I got bored. <laughs> I called the 1-800 number on the back of the I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> oh, no. I wanted to tell them I believe. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if you know what happened to stand-up comedy. There were no comedy clubs, so we had to do shows in the park. Which is just yelling at strangers. And I don't know if you remember 2020, it was not the year for white women to yell in parks. <laughs> and my name's Ashley, which is just like daughter of Karen. Like it's not. And then we did stand up on roofs, out, which thank God, like that really saved my life. But like, thank God we did it on, but it would be like 19 degrees. We're on a roof. I look like Bernie Sanders at the inauguration. I was just like, I was like, I'm more than my mittens. Like it was just, it was very, so I'm very grateful to be inside. Um, that's like all I, that, that's really how far gone I am. So I'm just like, is it inside? <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> I think that that is what's great is that as a collective, I feel like we all went into 2022 just being like, we're not going to work on ourselves at all anymore. <laughs> like, right? Like, it's great because we had worked on ourselves too much. Too much. You're done. No more working on yourself. Right? Because everybody did a lot of self-work and then they call you and they tell you about it. And you're like, I thought that was your homework. Like my friend Jenna, she called me up and she asked me for a favor because she was working on asking for help. But it was the same day that I was working on saying no. <laughs> so it, it didn't work out, it didn't. And then she heard this joke and she asked me if it was about her. And I've been working on being more honest. So I said, no, I said, no. <laughs> where it's like a, we're a work in progress. You know what I mean? <laughs> Tourism went away. That was, a, that was nice for a little bit in New York. Like there were no tourists. And I was like, oh, do we just burn down Times Square Olive Garden? What do we do? <laughs> great right and then I was like no this is our turn we go like I was like, I was like salad and breadsticks <laughs> Kansas ain't coming like it's like you know what I mean I it was weird though like because there was nobody to ask like every I used to get asked every day is this September 11th that's a Chipotle that's <laughs> If the 24-year-old is laughing at the 9-11 joke, you can laugh at that too, adults. Because normally, I got, I'm on TikTok and you've offended me and I don't. But she's still laughing. Oh yeah, you're gonna get kicked out of your generation. This is great. You can come join us, we have no standards. And you're lovely, yeah. You're lovely. I hope you want a pay cut. <laughs> I always felt, I could always tell when tourists would know, like, you could always tell when they'd been here like three days, right? Because they would try to jaywalk like us. 
and you just want to be like, don't do this. Like, you don't have it in you. You don't, you don't have the crippling cost of living in you. Like I'd walk out and I'd be like, don't follow me into traffic, Ohio. You have a life back there. Right? Like you have a kid and a car and a Costco membership. I have nothing. But I need to be hit by this car. One thing that was really good though, so because of the pandemic, I got to move. I moved to the Upper East Side. I know, I know, I know. Everybody thinks it's so fancy. But right when I moved there, I got stabbed in the face with Botox. It was crazy. <laughs> Okay, don't look at it though, cause it's fallen out, but like, I need more, but any, and I don't know, like does my brain eat it? I don't know what happens to it. I don't know. I hope I'm not getting dumber and uglier at the same, oh well, it doesn't matter. This is my interpersonal struggle. Okay, so <laughs> here's why I got the Botox, all right? Uh, I had five doctors accuse me of being bipolar. <laughs> And my friend was like, that's not an accusation. <laughs> that's a diagnosis. <laughs> and I was like, I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> and she was like, bipolar, you are bipolar. <laughs> the five doctors, I didn't believe, but when your friend Candy, who has a cooler or white claws, tells you, that's when you know. That's when you know. <laughs> Like, I might be bipolar. <laughs> but I'm not the fun bipolar. I'm not like, I don't go, I'm not like sad and then oh, let's go to Rio. I'm not that kind, right? I'm bipolar too, which just means that I get mad and then matter. <laughs> There's no fun. There's no fun involved. <laughs> and so I got the Botox because I was like, okay, I know. You know, if I freeze my face. <laughs> my feelings will follow. <laughs> but now I just get sad, but it's a secret. <laughs> like, I'm not happy, I'm stuck. You know? <laughs> But then I started getting so freaked out because um, like w the, the supply chain or whatever. <laughs> like we all think we're supply chain experts now. I hate that, we all, I, I, we know too much. I have everything on my phone. I think I got briefed by the White House today. I didn't. <laughs> I'm not a part of the administration. I act like I am. It's insane, we're crazy. But the, the supply chain, like I went to Starbucks and I was like, can I have an oat milk latte? And they were like, we don't have any oat milk. I was like, oh, supply chain. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I think I can, no it's, it's, but let me tell you something. If the pills get stuck on those boats, <laughs> I'll unload the docks, okay? <laughs> I will swim out to sea and get our serotonin. I will be Marlon Brando and on the waterfront. I don't care. Thank God, because honestly, for months, I was like, no one's gonna get that reference. It'll be cut out, don't worry. So I, <laughs> I will, I can't. This is why we have a supply chain issue because they don't tell us anything is gonna be lost that we care about, right? They're like, oh, all the Goya beans are stuck on the boats. <laughs> Who cares? 
Who cares? If they were like, y'all, all the lip gloss and Spanx are on those boats, I'd be like, I got it, I got this, I got this. No one needs to know where your butt actually sits, okay? If you give me a spray tan, I will fix the Verrazano Bridge, all right? They don't do the right initiatives with these things. They get the wrong people to do these jobs, right? Like potholes, everybody's upset about the roads. Okay, have you ever seen a drag queen's pores? No, that's who fixes your roads. Right? It's like, you don't need an infrastructure bill. You need a coupon to Mac Cosmetics. That's what you need. I don't know why people don't listen to me. <laughs> Is it because I'm severely mentally ill? <laughs> I love that I like didn't want to be medicated. For years, I didn't want to be. I was like, I was going to take fish oil and meditate. <laughs> And now I'm like, is that a pill on the floor? Is it wet? I'll take it. Like, just... Oh my gosh, I love Big Pharma. Have y'all tried Big Pharma? I love Big Pharma. Yes. It's so good. It's so good. What are you on? Yes, girl. Yes. Yes. I didn't mean to say girl. Yes, human. Yes, human. Zoloft, I know what you're on. What are... I know what actually almost all of you are. <laughs> so here's what happened. I went to CVS. I went, I went to the drugstore to go get my, you know, my boop boops, right? So, the, <laughs> so that way I could, you know, make eye contact, wear pants, right? Like, I, <laughs> I'm like, hey, it's me. Give me my pills. <laughs> And they were like, oh, we don't, we don't have them. We didn't, we didn't fill the prescription. I was like. <laughs> I don't think you understand the situation. <laughs> I was like, my whole personality is in that bottle. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to scoop, scoop. <laughs> Get out of Bunsen burner. <laughs> A periodic table? I don't know what you're gonna do, but. And then I remembered, I remembered my family and I was like, oh, okay, I got this. I was like, here's what you're gonna do, pharmacy man. You're gonna get your lab coat. I'm gonna go grab a bottle of Clorox and a lighter. <laughs> We're gonna put my cousin TJ on speakerphone. <laughs> we are making drugs. <laughs> pandemic there was like you know there were no clubs it was heartbreaking I didn't know if I'd ever get to do this again and uh, I thought about like what would I do if I wasn't a stand-up comedian <laughs> and then I thought okay well I like to bring people joy in their time of need right so I thought oh I can work at a funeral home And then I thought, oh, well, my way of bringing joy is I like to tell jokes. I don't know. <laughs> right? Like, he would be like, uh, you know, I would just be like, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, knock, knock. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there? <laughs> well, not your Uncle Ron. It's... <laughs> I'm so glad they figured that pandemic out. <laughs> um, I, uh, I woke up, it was probably like a Tuesday, I think, and I, and I really, I was like, oh no, I forgot to have a family. Ah! <laughs> I never 
never even thought about it. <laughs> and I can't date. I can't date. I don't want to date. I can't date because, okay, you know those women that are like, I'm just not into drama. She'll burn your house down. <laughs> That's me. That's me. I'm into drama. I love drama. I majored in drama. I went to school for drama. <laughs> I read the Greek, the Greek tragedy, Medea, saw no problem, no problem. I was like, what is this? I think she like fed her kids to her husband. I don't know. I was like, Where, where's the drama? I don't know. It, uh... I'll tell you what I was pissed about. Her name was Medea. His name, Jason. Oh no, I'm so sorry. If my name's Medea, your name better be Branzino. I don't know, something. <laughs> <laughs> that's another thing that pisses me off Brancino fish you go out to eat and now they're like because you have to work like it's just a, a, a T-bone of fish I, it, it's a bad joke it was a bad joke it was a bad, it's the stick shift of fish okay anyway <laughs> I had a boyfriend once, I had a boyfriend, and I couldn't stand it because he, I really couldn't. I hated it, I really hated it. I hated it, and people think that's so weird, right? They're like, what do you mean? What are you gonna do? And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. You think I've never seen an episode of The Golden Girls. <laughs> I have a plan. <laughs> it involves most of that room. <laughs> Like, I dated this one guy, right? And he was so needy. He was so needy. Like, he wanted me to call him. <laughs> On the phone. <laughs> Every day. And then when we broke up, he was like, I know your social security number. And I was like, great, I hope you steal my identity. You'll instantly get a new girlfriend. Her name's Sally Mae, and she calls every day. <laughs> yeah, debt crowd, nice. <laughs> we know how to party, right? <laughs> I have no savings, but I've had a great time. <laughs> That's the millennial way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some of my friends, uh, some of my friends have had babies recently. Some of them had natural births. <laughs> I mean, they do, uh, absolutely not. Absolutely. If I have a kid, I want so much medication that feels like an adoption. I, I wanted to feel like that baby got off a plane. You know what I mean? I want to be like, hey, baby, I'm mom. Like, like that, that's how much I do not want to feel. Having, I'd be like, are you driving? I can't. I can't drive. I can't. I can't do it. I, I don't know how. I, as I, I have driven, but I got in the car. I was like, all right, there's two pedals. I have two feet. This is easy. <laughs> That's not how it goes. And then uh, this is what really pissed me off is that every time I got in a car accident... <laughs> People wanted an explanation. <laughs> I'm like, it's an accident. <laughs> like one guy was like, you don't know how to drive. I was like, I know. <laughs> he goes, what were you thinking? I wasn't. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking about the benefits of the pomegranate, but I don't really see how that pertains <laughs> to our situation. <laughs> 
And then he goes, you know, you're responsible. I was like, no, I'm not responsible. <laughs> That's why this happened. <laughs> Um, I, uh, I, I have friends I, so I, I love being a single person I do not like going out to dinner with my friends in couples <laughs> you all need to look me in the eye right now before you leave the house you need to decide who is telling the stories <laughs> We are not doing this anymore, okay? I cannot, I don't know what you did at the Grand Canyon, but I do know that you think it was a Tuesday and he thinks it was a Thursday, and you think it was a blue shirt, but it was a red shirt because the same shirt you wore when you got a colonoscopy. We, can't, we can't do this anymore. I just sit there and I wanna go to the waitress, like, excuse me, can we get a round of roofies for everybody, please? I, 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 I want to get a shrimp cocktail fork, you know, the kind, the little one with the three, and I want to pick out my eyeballs and eat them at this dinner. And the only reason I don't is because then I know that couple would tell that story <laughs> to another single woman. And that's a hate crime, I don't do that. I, su I support women. <laughs> Just decide, just be like, all right, I got babysitter story tonight, and then don't interrupt. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Roofies. <sighs> That's one thing I love about getting older. I have not thought about getting roofied. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't remember. I don't remember. And it, it used to be a thing, right? Like, you're 24, you're probably still worried about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Men never were, you never, you've never in your life worried about being roofied, have you? Not us, no, you men would love it. You would love it. But no, you wouldn't, you really wouldn't because I thought about it, I thought about, right? I thought about what is a roofie? It's actually that you're gonna drug someone to pass them out to do something to them that they don't want done to them, right? So if a woman were gonna roofie a man, we just talk. <laughs> Like, I would just pass you out, drag you back to my apartment, put on Liza Minnelli, ask you how your day is, you're passed out, can't answer, I take that as you being cold and withholding. And then I tell you all about my day. <laughs> Starting with how I took my coffee, what I had for lunch, what my best friend Katie had for lunch, how we both got salads. I said no croutons. She got hers on the side, but then she ate them anyway. I mean, no judgment, but like... <laughs> it was weird, you know? And she's back together with Cody. Don't say anything. When we see them on Sunday, you're going on Sunday. And then... <laughs> And then I ask you if I look fat, you can't answer. I take that as yes. I, I scream, I cry, I throw myself into a wall. I'm like, I hate you. <laughs> and then I say, I'm sorry, I love you. <laughs> I tell you where I am on my cycle. I explain what a cycle is. And just as you're about to wake up, you're like, oh, no means no. <laughs> I'm like, you were asking for it. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, I, I was joking earlier about Botox, but I was actually like very upset with myself for getting it. Um, again, it's fallen out, but like I was, <laughs> I just didn't want y'all to be like, you should be upset with the doctor that gave it to you. But like, um, I was upset for getting it because I, I just wanted to be able to not do that, right? And then I thought about my family and the way we age, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> Cause I don't know if you've ever seen how Southern people age, but like, oh, it is, they look dead 20 years before it happens. <laughs> I feel like that's what they get for racism. It really is. God's just like, I'm so sorry. What did you say? There's your face. It's just. 
Like, you've seen my relatives on the news. I know it. Like, you know, you know when there's, um, like, a flood? And, there, <laughs> and there's always that one woman on a roof, and, like, the water's coming. And she's just, like, got a gun in one hand and a cat in the other. And she's like, I got the deed to the land in my panties, and I ain't leaving my property. Like that. Like, that's just my Aunt Cheryl, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I got Botox. But, but I really wanted not to. I really wanted not to, right? Because I wanted it to be like my revenge on cat collars. I wanted to try to like get the body tight and just let the face go to garbage. <laughs> and I'm talking like Southern Gar, I'm talking like Waffle House waitress. <laughs> Night shift. <laughs> like a woman named Bev, you ever met a Bev? <laughs> Works at the bowling alley behind the shoes. Just says things like, we don't carry half sizes. <laughs> like, that's what I wanted, right? So I'd be walking down the street, and then some guy would holler at me from behind, and I'd be like, gotcha. <laughs> and he'd be like, oh, oh, I'd be like, no take backs. <laughs> you smile. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I went to, um, you know what, I, ha I have, I have to say this one joke that I was supposed to say earlier, because you know we're like taping, and my beloved Candy, who directed this and has been just a game changer in my life, asked, asked for this joke, and I didn't say it when I was supposed to, and it's not that funny, and now I've made it really awkward, <laughs> but I'm going to say it because I have no self-respect. Um, so I, I was telling you about my Southern people and my family or whatever, and like, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. Like, they're very loving people. They really are. Like, one time at a family reunion, we auctioned off a pork butt <laughs> to pay for my cousin TJ's bail. Um, <laughs> and I don't know if you know what pork butts go for, but... <laughs> He's still in jail. So. <laughs> so this is uh this is that like supposed to be my last joke. And uh oh. uh well I want I wanted to tell y'all this though. Um so you know if you're doing stand up you're supposed to end with a laugh. Uh <laughs> like <laughs> It's like part of the job. Um <laughs> But, uh, you know, what we went through was, was big, what we all went through as people. And um, we didn't know that we would get to do this again. And I want you to know that this is the only thing I ever wanted in my whole life. And I'm so grateful that you came. I'm so grateful that you continue to be. And I love you. Good night. God bless.